So we have quite a, a varied um, schedule for the next 20 minutes, um, but we're kicking off um, with uh, Stefan talking about OpenStreet Browser. Thanks. Hi, I'm Stefan from Vienna, Austria. Um, I'm involved with the OpenStreetMap for about 11 years or so after I bought my first GPS receiver. And um, <clears throat> soon after I started playing with the data and uh, what came out was the OpenStreet Browser, um, which has its third or fourth iteration now. Um, I just want to show you what you can do with it. So uh, you get a normal map view, and on the left you have these categories. Uh, for example, you get everything which has some, which is gastronomy, like restaurants, bars, uh, fast food, cafes, uh, whatever. And so you, it was a bit faster because I pre-cached the data, so we don't have to wait for uh, the data. Uh, and yeah, you can click there, and then you see this the camps. It uh, has, uh, we don't know what kind of cuisine it has. It has an address, has a website, opening hours, and stuff. But here we are. Um, um, And there are like a variety of categories, the shopping, craft, leisure, children amenities like playgrounds, uh, uh, toy shops, and uh, restaurants which have a um, toilet with a diaper changing table and all things that are useful. Um, I want to show you some special integration which the OpenStreet browser has. This is uh, in culture. Um, objects that have um, some Wikipedia article will get an image, or Wikipedia, Wikidata, Wikimedia Commons image. There, uh, maybe you know there are several ways to tag um, objects from the Wikimedia group. And so here it's just the Wikipedia tag. Oops. Um, different example is, here there is the S printing horse and as you can see it has a Wikidata. Maybe, I, I guess you are not aware with Wikidata because I also just found out about it uh, recently. Um, Wikidata is a platform which connects uh, different, um, several Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons um, projects. You can go to wikidata.org and when I choose this ID, which is some, it's Q and some number. And if I go there, then it shows me the image, a location, and the comments category. And so these are data which is passed by OpenStreet Browser to give you this slideshow here. Yeah. Um, um, what you also can do is you can filter Uh, in the categories for special types, like I'm only interested in fountains, or I'm only interested in galleries. Um, and uh, other things that are interesting, this is the max speed map of this uh, region. So you see the uh, green lines are 30 kilometers, uh, orange are 50. Um, and uh, it even uh, understands the MPH if it's uh, tagged correctly. So it's really cool. What I am recently interested in is the start date of buildings and other objects. Uh, you see the gray buildings don't have a start date set. So most of them. 
There are just a few. Here's a, a synagogue which was built in 1994. And there's an Older church, apparently it was built in 1717. Uh, yeah, so there are some cities around the world which are uh, colored very bright um, because so many buildings um, are mapped with a start date, but this is quite some work to do. So if you're looking for something which you want to map, you can map Wikidata tags, uh, upload images of artwork and buildings and uh, memorial plates, and map start date. Um, do you still have a minute? Yes. So, um, if you are really interested in the Open Suite browser, you could even design your own categories. There is a um, website www.openstreetbrowser.org slash dev where you can register. It looks a little bit like GitHub. It's, a, it's Git T. It's a, it's a clone of GitHub, basically. And it's um, where you can create uh, these JSON files which um, have a category definition. For example, this would be the children category. Uh, make it a bit bigger. So. I think I broke it. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, so it's a category. These are the queries which it uses, like nodes, ways, and relations, leisure playground, summer camp, indoor play, uh, a few shops, uh, toilets with diaper, and kids areas. Then there's a description which. Uh, so, so depending on the type of object, it will choose the correct translation. Uh, markers and a map key. Even the filters are mapped here. And which is, if you click on edit, you would even get some, uh, it's not so usable in that size, uh, um, some, uh, UI where you can, which helps create these um, categories. So, but if you are really interested, then please come to me after the talk and I can show you how it is being done. Yes, thanks. Um, perfect, thank you so much for that. Um, as I said, we're gonna do questions right at the end. Um, so next we have Ariane talking about state of the map in southeastern Europe. Hi, uh, I'm Marianit. Uh, I come from Kosovo with an organization called FLUSK. And I'm here to present State of the Map uh, Southeast Europe, which we are organizing on the 25th to 27th of uh, October in the beautiful prison, uh, city of prison, much like this one, um, ancient and with lots of culture uh, in Kosovo. We've been around uh, since 2009 organizing uh, or working on uh, OpenStreetMap activities. So we've been doing lots of, uh, we've been doing lots of uh, mapathons um, edits uh, online. Unfortunately, we were, this is our first time uh, being present here. Um, our activities have increased, increased uh, dramatically uh, this year and 
we have a, a full plan of activities for next year as well, working on OpenStreetMap uh, meetups, uh, mapathons, data imports, and um, working with uh, different authorities like uh, government. We have a very lively OpenStreetMap uh, Telegram group. Uh, it's very uh, lively, uh, not always on OpenStreetMap, and I think that makes it uh, fun. So you're all, come, uh, you are all welcome to drop by and uh, say hi there. Uh, so the conference uh, is our first uh, big thing on OpenStreetMap. We're trying to uh, get as many people from the region to uh, come to prison and uh, make connections. Uh, learn. Uh, we're trying to convert as many GIS people, traditional GIS people, into open GIS. And uh, we'll, we're also uh, bringing computer science students and um, uh, some OSM mappers uh, that are in the region. Um, but of course, we're not limited to that. Uh, anybody can join. Um, we are organizing it in a, in a former military, German military camp. As you know, uh, Germany was present after the war in Kosovo with their peacekeeping force. And uh, now it's a, it's a great camp that has been left there for us to do this great thing. Um, the call for speakers is still ongoing for a few more days. So you're welcome to go to that uh, website and fill the um, call for speakers. It's really simple. Uh, it's a really simple uh, ah, next slide. Uh, process, and uh, we promise to be uh, as supportive of you as, as possible when on your way there. Uh, if you need uh, like uh, support, travel support, uh, we can do that. Um, we can. We are also offering accommodation there, so pretty much everything is covered if you need to be there. But also, if you are just want to come by and attend and see the country, um, travel a bit around, um, you're welcome to do that. We have organized transport from the region, so that includes uh, Tirana, Skopje, Podgorica, and Belgrade, so the capitals of our uh, neighboring uh, countries. Okay, so this is all from us. If you have any questions, we are around wearing these bright orange t-shirts. You cannot miss us, so uh, come by and just say hello or talk to us how to um, come and speak in prison. Thank you. Hello, um, thanks so much. I think it's really cool that you have transport. I've never known that before in an event. Um, so um, next, we're going to have planning urban accessibility with OSM. everyone, Alessandro, Sarita, and talking a uh, short talk about uh, how we used OpenStreetMap for planning urban accessibility for disabled uh, people in uh, the city of Padua, who funded this uh, project together with the patronage of the Wikimedia I Italia. And the, um, the topic was the, it's called PEBA, is a plan for elimination of uh, architectural barriers. And it's a legislative tool, so it's not only a project, so the, the, the output is an um, administrative legisla legislation, a bounding one. Um, the aim was to ensure for full accessibility of urban paths, spaces, and uh, buildings for, for all the people. And uh, it had a wide participatory vision in the sense that we organized uh, 10 meetings um, for uh, citizens to um, select the areas where to, to map accessibility uh, elements and uh, 10 mapping uh, events to collect information. We, uh, OpenStreetMap has been uh, selected, has been chosen as uh, the core tool for mapping accessibility elements. It's not, it's not used for, for background, but from the beginning, uh, we chose to, to go uh, directly on OpenStreetMap from the beginning to the end of the process. 
using open uh, geospatial tools for uh, analyzing uh, data and uh, uh, inputting data, starting from uh, um, ground uh, images uh, through mapillary, using field papers and uh, Osman app for um, collecting information, and JOSM for uh, editing and OpenStreetMap, uh, plus QGIS for producing the final uh, cartographic outputs of the, of the project. Uh, this slide is just to tell you that usually, or more commonly, uh, the approach to accessibility in OpenStreetMap is about um, information uh, on uh, buildings or uh, shops, whether they are accessible to wheelchair. And the system is quite simple. As wheelchair, yes, no limited. Plus, you can add information, some information on steps or uh, bathrooms. Uh, but it's uh, mainly focused on uh, places where you can enter or not. We uh, needed to uh, go not specifically on that, but on footway, paths, uh, crossings, uh, sidewalks. So the tagging systems is not so simple, and we want it to be more as, as quantitative as possible. Um, not using, we haven't really used the wheelchair tag, but try to um, focus on the tag scheme, considering all the elements of a sidewalk, of a crossing, or a, and uh, you see uh, here a, a table with some of the elements and how we interpreted them as uh, um, useful for accessibility purposes. So smoothness, width, incline, height for uh, the footways and paths. For the curbs, the height of the curbs, whether or not there is a tactile paving or uh, for the traffic uh, signals, uh, if there is a sound um, uh, signal available, or whether there are obstacles in the, in the sidewalk, in the, in the path, to be uh, described and, uh, um, and uh, included as an information for uh, accessibility of the path. And uh, uh, the final outcome maps is something like that, where we, we have the paths, the crossings, the curbs, the obstacles with a, a, a degree of accessibility uh, made directly from um, uh, selecting that quality, qualitative, quantitative information from the uh, OpenStreetMap database and represented. This is uh, one of the uh, parts of the, of the, of the, the maps in the, uh, in the plan of the, of the city. So it's OpenStreetMap uh, at all. And some numbers. We, used, um, we collected more than 10,000 images in Mapillary. It's 40 kilometers of footway paths mapped. People involved, uh, specific elements mapped, uh, just to, to give you a, a, um, a rough idea of the effort. And just a suggestion, so one of the main things that we want also to try to improve is how to use this information in OpenStreetMap to have a route oriented to a disabled person, in this case, uh, through maybe uh, Open Road Services that has a profile uh, specifically uh, usable for a wheelchair. And thank you. Uh, we have a poster in the poster sessions. You can download the poster at that link, and I'm available for questions. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, so we have one more talk and then we will do questions if people have them um, before heading over to the poster session. Um, so very excited to introduce um, Sandra who is gonna be talking um, about crowd mapping for mental health awareness. Um, so yeah, looking forward to hearing about it. Hello? Okay. Um, uh, I, I, I have presented this at the HOT Summit, but I, I was hoping to share this with more people and gather more help, on, especially on the project's mapping platform. So anyway, just a background. Um, surveys show that there is a very low percentage of people who seek professional help for their mental health. So, 
Um, the reason for this mostly is because of the stigma on mental health and the discrimination against people who have mental health problems. So people are ashamed or uh, afraid to share to other people that they might be having problems on mental health, let alone uh, seek help or ask for any information on how to seek professional help. So what we wanted to do with this project is to show where the nearest help is. So if there's a map, I could easily look for the places where to ask for professional help. And the, uh, inform uh, so the information would be there. Uh, I will show later what the uh, basic information we wanted to show on the map are. So, and the idea is for anyone anywhere with internet access to view the map and contribute to the map too if they have additional places that they want to add to the map to help other people too. So what we did first is to uh, list all the available uh, sources, all the information that are available in the Philippines, the, the mental health services and resources that are, that are available, and these are the important information one might need when looking for professional help. So name, uh, doctor, so on and so forth. And this is the mapping platform. I'm going to sh quickly show it to you. So if you want to add a map here, and you can, can just click edit and then add a point there. And the, the details that one might need can be added here. Um, I'm not, I don't have any coding background, so I, I just tried to learn this all very quickly through the help of GitHub and all the other resources. And anyway, um, the person, anyone can also, can also locate their location. So if, for example, I'm at, a, I'm at a clinic right now and it's not yet mapped, I could also add the location. Uh, this uses uh, geolocate, uh, leaflet control loca locate, and then OSM geocoder for the search tool. And the data here is uh, stored to Ocarto DB via SQL. So anyway, if anyone just wants to check information that's available near them, the points also show these data. So there, um, if anyone needs uh, or if anyone here wants to contribute or uh, add information or help improve the plat that platform, please uh, reach out. I'll show the details later too. And anyway, aside from this platform, we also have, we also conduct mapathons. And for this, we, we use MapContrib. And we also teach uh, the basics of open street mapping and then use MapContrib with these default tags, so healthcare and psychotherapy. So since these are points, we also made default the uh, indoor. Yeah. So there, um, our first mapathon was held last May, and these are the map points so far. Yeah. So from these maps that I alone was mapping. This is now the, the map where it's more collaborative and it also provides purpose based on feedback from other mental health advocates. It somehow provides purpose for those with mental health problems. They feel that they can help more to the community and to those who are to have the same problems. And these are also the other mapping projects on, the, on our website. So it's called Mapping Emotions. It encourages people to share their mental health stories to show that mental health occupies space, it's real, and to also provide hope for those under undergoing the same problems. And this one is here, here. It's for those, pe it's for those people who want to, who's willing to listen to anyone undergoing mental health problems. So most of the, the people here just input their Instagram or Twitter accounts or social media accounts because they, uh, they, uh, they are willing to had to be reached out by other people who, for example, um, most people have sui suicide ideations and it comes at any time. So some of this, these people need someone to talk to. So they could just look here in the map and then see who's near them and who, how can they contact them and they can talk to them anytime.
So there, if you pull requests or welcome, I'm sorry. <laughs> here. Yeah, so here. Just please uh, contact us in the GitHub username is this mental health awareness. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much. I'm um, so wondering if maybe um, all of the um, uh, Lightning presenters could come to the front and then just if we have questions, um, we can go on and ask them. Uh, I'm sure people are very keen to get to the, the drinks and nibbles and the poster events, so we'll keep it relatively short. Um, if you have a question, you've got one mic over there, one mic here, and please wait for us to get to you. Um, anybody want to go first? Um, a question to the Kosovo conference people. Um, is, is the logo that you have on the t-shirt, is that the region? Can you show the t-shirt? Is that uh, Southeastern Europe? Uh, yeah, good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, more or less, we're, we always have the difficulty identifying the region, where it stops, where the Balkan stops, where the Western Balkan stops. Uh, many people don't want to be in the Balkans, actually, uh, but more or less we're trying to represent that, stylistically or artistically. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have a question for Sandra, just around um, what is the kind of extent of the um, of the project. Um, currently, the map center is on the Philippines, and the available data is within the Philippines. But we hopefully we could also add data from other places. Yeah, from all over the world. Perfect. Uh, any last questions, or should we close there? No, no, no. Okay, perfect. Thank you everyone for coming, for staying till six. Um, and the next event is in the Mathematicon building. Um, so see you all over there. Thanks to our presenters. <laughs>